Good morning, everyone here uh, in church and all of you watching online. Uh, this is St. Andrew's Episcopal Church in Methuen, Massachusetts. Our uh, liturgy today is the Holy Eucharist Rite 2, which may be found in your Book of Common Prayer on page 355. Let us stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. together. O oh God, you declare your almighty power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May be seated. Good morning. The first reading comes from the book of Numbers. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all, of, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight? that you lay the burden of all this people on me. Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them? That you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors. Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once, if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. 
bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, and Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 19. We'll read responsibly, breaking at the asterisk. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweet far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins, let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading comes from the book of James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Their prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for th three years and six months it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Oh.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. We tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. when we fall short of perfection. You can go to the most rigid fundamentalist church, and I've been to some, and you will not find a room filled with severed arms and legs and mason jars filled with eyeballs. Because they don't take it literally. Jesus, we all understand, is speaking metaphorically. But those same churches, as well as maybe some of the churches we grew up in, believe the second half of what Jesus said is to be taken literally. That there is this literal hell and it's a place of eternal conscious torment and with smoke and fire and all the rest. Yet, as you know, the Greek word here for hell isn't hell, it's Gehenna. Gehenna is a real place, all right. It's a valley south of Jerusalem where back in the Old and Old Testament days, Occasional child sacrifice took place. And in the current day that Jesus is speaking, it is a smoldering garbage dump for Jerusalem. And it was slowly becoming a metaphor for what might be the judgment like after death. 
I, for one, certainly do not believe the God and Father of Jesus creates human beings as finite and fallible and then sends them to eternal conscious torment for being finite and fallible. I believe here Jesus is speaking metaphorically, just like he is in the first part of that saying. About, he's speaking about the cost of choosing to live without God. And how, when we do that, we are perfectly capable and do on occasion create living hell on earth. I mean, that's what white America did to black Africans. It's what Nazi Germany did to Jews and homosexuals. Created a living hell on earth. No doubt about that. But today, I want us to look inside into the reality of that smoking, smoldering garbage dump living inside each of us. For the more clearly we can see how we contribute to our own inner hell, our own inner torment, the more we can move into the light and life of God in the realm of God and cause less pain, not only to ourselves, but to our neighbors and create less suffering. But let me just start with the recognition and I realize what I just said, I misspoke just a touch. I want to say that pain and suffering are not the same thing. I think I've used this image before. Imagine one morning you're getting dressed and you whack your little toe on the table next to your bed. You are in serious pain, right? And you sit on your bed, you look at your toe and to see, number one, if it's still attached. And then you look to see if it's pointing in a very unnatural direction, right? That's happened to all of us and it really hurts. That's pain. And at that moment, we have a choice, don't we? Are we going to add suffering on top of the pain? Oh, how do we do that? Oh, I don't know, by blaming our spouse for having moved that table a quarter inch when they were cleaning. Or blaming our mother for giving us that table in the first place. Or we blame God for giving us such a wretched life. On and on. But now, because we've had this incident with the toe, we're late for work, so we hobble to our car, we start to race off to work, and we get behind a guy who's going 20 miles an hour. You want to scream. Maybe you do scream. Maybe you want to ram his car. We believe the fiction that we will have peace on the inside when we can get all the good things we want out here and get rid of all the bad things that are out there that we don't want. Only when we're in total control will we find peace. Yes, Lord, I will be at peace once I get everything ordered up just like I want. But here's the thing, and you know, and if you weren't wearing a mask, I, you, I can see your smiles. The hurt toe and the slow car are just events. We have a hundred events during a day. But as we use them to add to the melodrama of our life, our suffering increases. Some events do cause pain, but only our mind causes suffering. And on those days that we don't kick the table, and we get to work on time, no problem. The voice in our head will remind us of something else we're upset about. Maybe that fight we had with our, with our father 30 years ago. Maybe it's time to re replay that scene. Or that negative report we got from our boss. Well, it wasn't a negative report. He just sort of frowned during a staff meeting, and we know what that means. And we just start suffering all over again. We've all been there. We've all done that because the voice in the head keeps reminding us of all those things we want to forget and we wish had never happened. So what is Jesus telling us to do in this startling metaphor about severing 
limbs. I think he's telling us at least two things. First, he's telling us to pay attention because our mental habits are ruining our lives, ours, and others. And second, he's telling us that since we are creating our own suffering, it's possible to stop creating our own suffering. That's the whole thing about, well, if your hand caused it, get rid of your hand. There's something we can do. We are not innocent, helpless victims to that voice in the head. There's something we can do. And of course, the thing Jesus calls us to do, the technical term we use, he calls us to repentance, which means metanoia, means to change our minds so we stop living inside the melodrama of me and start living inside the story of the realm of God, where we live in gratitude for the forgiveness and healing of Christ. Where, to quote Michael Singer, no matter what happens in our minds or in the world, we keep our hearts open to the loving energy of the divine flow. That's what metanoia, that's what repentance means. To keep our hearts open to the divine flow that's going through us at all times. And in the divine flow, or you may want to call that the Holy Spirit, when we kick our toe, what do we do? We have days like this, right? We kick our toe, we sit on the bed, we look at it, we take three deep breaths, we ask God for healing and peace. We may even thank God that we've got a, a toe that we can hurt because we read about the other day of all these people who lost their feet to landmines. And you see, by not adding to the melodrama called woe is me, we may have pain in our toe, but we won't have suffering in our mind. Does that make sense? Makes sense. We all know this. If you want to learn more about dealing with that voice in your head, I recommend The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. Fabulous book. So I'm happy to talk with you afterwards about that. So Jesus this morning is calling us out of the suffering of our personal melodramas into the peace and joy where we can be witnesses to the liberation from suffering the peace that passes all, of, all understanding that flows out of Christ, out of His cross and resurrection into our lives. A few years ago, my daughter passed on a song to me that I had never heard. It's called, Just Be Held. Just Be Held. It's by Casting Crowns. And it says this in part. When you're tired of fighting, chained by your control, there's freedom in surrender. Lay it down and let it go. So when you're on your knees and answers seem so far away, you're not alone. Stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart. It's falling into place. You're not alone. I'm on the throne. Stop holding on and just be held. Jesus calls us to stop whenever we realize we're once again building our lives on the, the garbage we have stored in our minds. And instead to build our lives on Christ's love flowing, ever flowing through our hearts. He says, come to me, all who labor and are heavy labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In every moment we have that choice. We can live in hell or we can live in heaven. But the good news is that Christ is always choosing us. He doesn't wait for us to choose him. Christ is always choosing us. And therefore we have freedom, the freedom no matter what, to never ever close our hearts to His love. Amen.
Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people can be found on page 387. We will use form three. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the parishes of the North Shore Deanery, for Grace Church Salem, St. Peter's Church Iglesia de San Pedro Salem, Christ Church South Hamilton, Church of the Holy Name Swampskit, and Trinity Church T Topsfield. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Episcopal Church and our friends at St. John's in Humbi, Tanzania. In the local cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Exenia Orthodox Church here in Methuen, Mass. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those on our parish prayer list, Butch Paris, Kathy Hillis, Patty Eldred, Cynthia Montecalvo, Joyce Sparta, Sarah Hamilton, Tony Montecalvo, Ann Duffy, Cameron Collier, Chris and Doreen Hutchins, Christopher Duby, Jack and family, Sean Brodeur, Edison Mande, and James Senegalo from Humbi. Bring them all to the joy of your salvation. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We also wish to pray for Peter Kwaki's brother, Kufi, who passed away in Ghana last week. And we pray for the safe travel of Peter and Rebecca, who are traveling to Ghana for his funeral. The flowers are given in loving memory of Warren and Dorothy Archambault. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh God, our King.
King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins. Banish our fears. Make us bold to praise you and to do your will. And steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day. Through the saying, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Page 360. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You may be seated. Again, welcome to all of you here and all of you uh, at home watching today or later in the week. The worship committee will be meeting today. And next Sunday we are having the blessing of the animals, blessing of the pets. We have yet, to, when we meet, we will decide whether it will be an in-person bringing your pets or a virtual bringing of your pets or bringing a picture. Um, but watch your, your email for the announcement about that. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries today? Come on up. Gracious and loving Father, we thank you for this, your child, who you have brought into this world. We ask that you would continue to fill her with your peace and your joy, and that your love would continue to shine through your world, through her. And we thank you and bless you for all your many gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our, our Lenten hymn today will be Amazing Grace, which is found on the insert, or if you didn't pick one of those up, it's in the, book, it's in the prayer book on page 671. I want to thank Craig for producing these and the, from the Lenten book study. Very interesting material on the back. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, and Mary, our mother, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal, that the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in His name. The risen Lord, you know who us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praise His Father together through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
365. Let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you and loves you like a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road. And may God's blessing, Creator, Christ, and Spirit be upon you and all those you love and upon this broken world this day and forever. Rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.